today participating today participating in this event. Um, I'm I have with us or we have with us a very wonderful person called U V Krishna Mohan Rao. Krishna and I are friends for probably a quarter century now. He's uh, uh, in his late sixties. He has many things common with the green movement. Uh, uh, he's he's an I am Ahmedabad alumni alumnus of 1984. That's nearly 40 years now. He's an engineer, of course, first. He had the rare privilege of working with one Mr. Raju, who mentored him and who was one of the early pioneers of energy efficiency in India. And uh, he also happens to have been mentored, had the rare opportunity to be mentored by C.K. Prahlad of the Ann Arbor uh, campus, the university um, in Illinois. Krishna has not been simply an energy efficiency expert. He brings a rare commitment and at once competence when it comes to issues that relate to uh, bulk use of energy in many building typologies across the world. He's worked in the Southeast uh, Asia parts. He's worked, of course, in India in many, many thousands of projects. He's done, I would think, about 4,000 Five hundred or five thousand energy audits across the, across the country. He's also been involved in projects in the uh, GCC and the UAE areas of the Gulf. He's worked in mainland Africa also on a few projects. Now uh, that is only to give you a minor glimpse of what Krishna's work has been over forty years. Krishna is also uh, very deeply devoted and dedicated to the uh, uh, ISKCON movement. He is himself a, a devotee of. Uh, of uh, Srila Prabhupada, who founded the uh, ISKCON movement some 50 years ago. Uh, today, he's with us in order to speak on what it means for you all as youngsters to choose careers which do not harm the earth and which soften, shall we say, the footprint we all leave while you create careers, while you fulfill your aspirations of being engineers, or IT experts, or whatever else you want to do in your own lives. Uh, you will see a more detailed profile of Yuri Krishna Rao on the chat box, and therefore I will stop talking about this now. I will request um, Pyle Jain, the key founder of the Prem Jain Memorial Trust, and the blessed doctor of uh, Dr. P, uh, Dr. Prem Jain, to speak a few words on how one, the Prem Jain, Memorial Trust, which was launched in the end of 2018, has now over five years evolved into something that is having a national presence. In fact, there was somebody telling us two days ago, one of the governing uh, council members, that the, if there is a reason at all for us to cherish and to nurture the memory of Dr. Jane, it has to be to see that it stays for the next 10 generations and not simply for the next generation of two. Uh, Pyle Jain will also speak to you about the numbers of events that are being celebrated across many states and many cities uh, uh, on, uh, on what we call the Mahotsav. This week is the Mahotsav. Dr. Jain was born uniquely on the 26th of January, which is celebrated as, the, as, as Republic Day, as you all know. And, uh, that is all I will want to say now. First to uh, Pyle Jane for her to speak a, a few words. Pyle Jane herself is a fashion icon. You can check pylejane.com and you'll see a lot of things about her. But in all her humility, she says, I am my, I'm my bless, I'm the blessed daughter of my father, she says. Over to you, Pyle Jane. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, doctor. And uh, thank you, Mr. Rao, for being here. Um, this is the fifth day of our um, fifth, actually, Harit Prem Bharat Mahotsa. This is It'll be five. This is the fifth year we are celebrating the Mahotsa. When we started, when we conceptualized this Mahotsa, we thought we'll have a few events to celebrate sustainability and to connect people uh, on the path of green. So, you know, it was really the trust was developed to spread the message of sustainability. Uh, more to young people, and I know that's what you're going to do today, but since we have students here, I want I'm hoping some of them will take away from this uh, session and actually pursue it in their careers and follow it and, and you know, keep spreading this message. That's the whole intention of uh, the trust. 
when we started, we had, I think, 20 odd events. We'll have to ask a lot of people, please, will you plant some trees? Will you do something? Will you talk about green? Uh, can you talk about new green technologies? Uh, I have to say that in five years, and Dr. Hariharan is, is one of the main driving forces of this trust. Uh, we have Mr. V. Suresh, uh, Raghupati Ji, Gurmeet. I mean, there's some key members who have been involved in driving this trust. But as we come to the fifth year, I uh, it, this has taken on a whole different um, scale. I mean, on an hourly basis, I am literally reposting on, on social media and on LinkedIn the events which are happening. We have lost count. We are expecting there to be about 100 this year over the week. And most of them are in person. That's the beauty of it this year. Two years, we were all deprived of in-person events. So this year is very special because everybody's meeting and connecting. And it's like we've become one big, big, large uh, green family, so to say, you know, which believe, which has common beliefs, common faith, and are working together to make a difference uh, to the planet. So I won't take any more of your time. I'm very happy there's some students here. I hope uh, they will listen to you, be inspired by you and uh, take this message forward. Thank you very much. And thank you, everybody, for being here today. Thank you, Pail. Very simple, nice message from you. Let me acknowledge the presence of uh, some distinguished people here in the, uh, in the list of participants. Uh, there is Dr. Upendra Ravel from Surat, who is one of those distinguished water scientists who has worked on water for nearly 50 years, from 1967 onward. That's more than 50 years. And uh, we also have a few lovely members from the global headquarters of ISKCON, which is about 100 kilometers due north of uh, Calcutta. And uh, welcome to you, Janaki Prabhu, to Murari Devidasi, and many others here who are present. I'm not taking all the names, but it's nice to have people like you who are, I'm certain, to be influenced, impacted by what our Mr. UV Krishnamohan Rao has to present today. Krishna, it's a privilege to have you today with us. I will mute myself now. The floor is yours for the next whatever time, 30, 35 minutes, after which we'll take some questions from them and see how we want to uh, leave some very memorable imprint on these young minds today. Thank you, Krishna. Over to you. Doctor, sorry to interrupt. Somebody is saying they are finding echo. There's a, somebody has written on the Q&A that there's an echo. Um, Mr. Jagannath Kishi, uh, Keshavan. It was just for the fraction of second pile, Ji. It's now okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Over to you, Krishna. The floor is yours. You may want to share your screen or whatever, or maybe you want to say hello. Krishna. Uh, he has to unmute himself, I think. He or lost what? the connection. He lost the connection. He's dropped off. Oh, we lost him? Ah, he's lost. Uh, acha, acha, he's, he's supposed to come back. Uh, while he does that, uh, can I request Professor Vanshika Agrawal to say a few words? Ah, Krishna is back. But maybe you want to share something in a way. Oh, just one moment. Krishna, are you there? I'm back. Yes, we lost you for a minute. Yeah. Um, okay, you can share your uh, presentation. We can always invite uh, Vanshika Agrawal to speak after you have uh, completed your session. Share your screen and get on with it. I can. Yes. I can. Yeah. Thank you. Can you see my screen? Yes. 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 We can, and you can move to the view mode and get on. Is it? Is it uh, clear now? Perfect. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. You're still on the, you're not still on the view mode. Yes, now you are. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, please continue. Uh, 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 thank you very much uh, for this uh, wonderful opportunity from uh, Plain Jane uh, Memorial Trust. Very, very honored. And I had the rare privilege of uh, meeting Dr. Plain Jane years ago. And I must you know, mention this to the audience here, I'm an eternal fan of Dr. Uh, someone who's walked the talk throughout his life is left an imprint that is everlasting. Okay? So I want you to please note this. Uh, very, very dear to me. Okay? Now, I've been asked to speak on um, going green is an imperative. 
is it a choice or do we have no choice? Do we recognize this or we don't recognize this? Now, the, while my lifetime agenda is sustainability, A to Z sustainability, uh, for this uh, presentation, um, maybe about 35 minutes, 30, 35 minutes, I'll be covering on the linkage of environment to energy and therefore the nexus how it works for sustainability indicators. How energy efficiency is the first key step or the key step for uh, sustainability. Talk about the life cycle benefits rather than bits and pieces. Give a few case studies and uh, finally take note. In the best interest of time, if I find that you know oh, it's difficult to uh, cover within the 30, 35 minutes, do not worry, you will have this presentation in your hands. In the case study section, which will be available for you for reference later on, I can perhaps really skip that and get to it. Uh, I just want to know, recheck, am I audible? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Uh, first part is on the energy environment of uh, nexus and uh, therefore sustainability. Now, this is the theoretical definition of uh, sustainability by the none less than the United Nations World Commission. I am calling it theoretical because uh, it's talking as if we are required to do something for the future generations while taking care of our needs now. Not that uh, it does not really reflect that we've already begun to shoot ourselves in the foot. Why do I say that? Now, the human species, are we, you know, consumers or the gobblers? Why I'm asking this? God has created something like about 8.4 million you know, species of which uh, the human is just one of the 8.4 million. Amongst the lot, uh, we have been given a sense of logic, most intelligent perhaps. That's what we think. In practice, I do not know whether they're really intelligent. We are the one, we are creating devastation for the entire uh, uh, world, 8.4 million species, including ourselves. Now there's something called Earth Overshoot Day, which actually marks the date when humanity's demand for ecological resources and services in a given year exceeds what the Earth can regenerate within that year. Nature is so beautiful that if you are in limits, if you are doing sensibly what you're required to do, then it regenerates within the same year of your use, whatever you have consumed. But if you look at the year that has gone by, just gone by, the Earth Overshoot Day was on July 28th. That means just in seven months, five months much ahead of the December 31st, we have gobbled everything that was meant for the full year. Okay? Now, what does it mean? Supposing I have a retirement fund and I've parked it as a retirement benefit fund for myself, and I'm supposed to draw the interest on that for my daily life, what I have done is I've not just depended on my fixed deposits. I have taken the fixed deposits of my great grandchildren. Okay, gobbled it. That's the problem. Humans in 2022 used as much as ecological resources as if we have lived on 1.75 Earths. How on Earth somebody can think that we have 0.75 Earth extra available? You don't recognize this as a human species. You do not recognize. That's where I say 
while God has created us the most intelligent, perhaps we do not put that intelligence into sensible practice. We are shooting ourselves in the foot. The right side bottom gap the, the, uh, picture shows, supposing the entire world lived like the United States, average United States, we would require not 1.75 hours, as many as five hours. Why go to the United States? Right here in India, amidst us, amidst our circles, we would find people who behave as if we have 10 hours. We would beat America hands down. We are senseless people. We are senseless creatures. We are no sensitive beings. We do not have senses. I'm sorry, I have to be candid. I have to be harsh, but this is the reality. Therefore, are we consumers or unwitting gobblers and destroyers? Sometimes I'm an ignorant or I'm compelled to use certain things which are unfortunately would you know, create devastation on the environmental front. So wittingly or unwittingly, the human species is the totally one-way traffic trap. Therefore, me, am I a consumer, a gobbler, or a destroyer? We cease to be prosumers. We do not produce anything. We consume more than what we are entitled to. We consume more than what we are required to do, devastating, creating devastating all of them. Now, this is a Swiss bank building, not in Switzerland, but right here in hot and humid China. I asked this question again, and again, and again. Are we consumers? Are gobblers. We are all, many of us, specialists in greenwash from all sides. This building, if there's an opportunity for someone to put a glass in the terrace, perhaps he will put, he or she will put. If there's an opportunity to put on underground, also do not have left an square inch of the exposed surfaces without the glass. Now, I asked just the other day, a little girl, an intern, I asked her to compute what is the energy air conditioning load by virtue of this facade, of this nonsensical design of a Chennai building. It's seen as a, something like a, an identity crisis. You think you're, you're not working for an international firm until unless you, know, you have something which is laden with glass and uh, foolish uh, facades. The additional load that this little girl computed using some path analysis of this building for the square foot area exposed is 800 tons of representation as a load, an additional load. 800 tons. Just imagine your home air conditioner is just one box outside and one box inside. There are 800 boxes all around infested. Now, when you're blessed like elders, they say live 100 years. This building life will not be less than 100 years. What a legacy not to leave behind for future generations. Please, for heaven's sake, don't be a party to such nonsense. The entire uh, building facade is glass laden, designed to be anti sustainability as a heat trapping greenhouse. Throughout the year, the sun is heating the oven and air conditioning. Greenwash saying, it's a green glass, eco-friendly glass deployed and so on and so forth. Ironically, getting the green uh, building rating points because you've used a green glass, eco-friendly glass, nonsensically, Black and number eight. Okay. Now, uh, this is a picture taken by me personally in one of the buildings. You see, the this is again a, another greenwash. Renewable energy are required to be used. Okay. 
someone is meeting the targets. Someone is having a KPI done up, okay? Solar panels fasten vertically on vertical walls. How on earth this is going to be effective? Okay. Now they would say ECBC requires or NBC requires so much percentage of renewable energy for your building, et cetera, et cetera, on-site, off-site, whatever. So I would just say, yeah, I am in the sustainability sphere. Give lectures and say, I think, give lecture statements, public announcements, notices, all of sorts of communication saying that you're supporting the And notice another thing. There is a daylight provision nicely provided by the de uh, designer, <coughs> but you either curtail and if you don't, uh, and curtain it, daylight, use electric light, sunrise to sunset, where with absolute foolishness to do the job. Why at all provide the provision? Why close it and use coal powered power plants emitting tons and tons of negative emissions and using this for closing a light and using an artificial light for your meeting your purpose. Again, renewable energy targets met and platinum gold. Okay, so you see in every activity we see, okay, there are green wash happening. You know, somebody even says, and this is not a joke, or it's been put in this economic times, why don't you have, go to war in electric vehicles and save the planet? This is the kind of green wash that happens no matter what activity one is in. And sustainability is subsumed by the corporate in some activity or other, showcase and say, we are here. Okay. It's time for the, us to rise up, especially the uh, children. Of course, doesn't have any age bar, you know, the students, no age bar. Students and professors alike, I think we need to forget what you have done until now, but at least don't get governed by this. Don't be a party such as this. They were indicators. I call this sustainability compulsions. If I am in the beverage industry, it's been com compelling for more than a decade now in India and overseas that you have to generate your own water. Now, one of these companies, I'm putting this all, you know, I have nothing for it against it, this cola company, but I'm just, this all in public domain. I just want you to please look at everything that you see with a pinch of salt and then don't take it for granted as to what is being claimed as sustainable. Question, participate, proactively do what you do. This is printed on a, the label is printed on a synthetic thing. The producer, not the consumer, is responsible for its ultimate, you know, uh, responsibility, doesn't take any responsibility for doing it environmentally a friendly manner in terms of this world. He just has in the business of making water and you are in the business of consuming. You are not responsible, he is not responsible. What happens with billions of bottles, plastic bottles that have been produced? And I can say I am uh, supporting sustainability. Okay, now I didn't stop just with, I said I have nothing for it against one color company. This is another color company. A can of uh, Coke. If you look at uh, the numbers, just see for the real energy that is being spent is for the ingredients is only 13.3%. That means what you consume to quench your thirst or to meet your ego, you would require only 13.3 in a can of Coke. But what you're doing is rest is all your ego generating. Ego kindling issues, 99.999% of it not required. What you need is a cola, but what you don't require is a devastating impact of what you are being uh, thrust as a consumer. Okay? Now, Coke can say, take uh, uh, pride in saying they're only 0.17, whereas a uh, milk is at 0.8 kg per uh, kg. Carbon dioxide emissions equal. 
what we are talking is please no matter in which uh, profession which activity what service you provide please have a deep dive in terms of saying what is the negative impact that you're doing are you in a position to contribute to mitigate it if you don't mitigate it i, I think you are declared guilty now am i going back to the earth what you know what i take in day in and day out the consumption per capita for my normal requirements okay i'm not doing anything extraordinary i'm not doing anything which is extravagant for me to have a 24 hour life cycle i require 10 units per day 3650 units per year now there are many people who don't even have 100th of this as an energy requirement that's another different story but i'm just saying a ordinary person doing a normal life in india would have this kind of a energy consumption what does it mean it means actually 2.9 tons of co2 emission per year year after year 2.9 tons of co2 now supposing you have you are very holy you are very sacred consider yourself to be a very nice good person etc if you were to uh, plant trees you think in terms of 136 trees per year mind you this is a word trees it's not sapling these are grown up trees so 136 trees per year is what you are required to do and please think for yourself when was the last time you heard a lecture or a request for somebody which you have not heeded to for planting a sapling very hard to find people who do this kind of mitigation in their life supposing i live for 70 years okay i am required to plant and nurture 10008 trees this person have you done it are you ever doing it can i ever plant nurture at the rate of 139 grown up trees per year in this form of law i am doing no question at all please place this question to your side and check where you are on the co2 meter now you ask anybody how many appliances you are using somebody might have even thought even just the previous slide when i said 10 units per day hey am i using so much okay and so on and so forth okay in fact if you notice there i put even your cooking gas everything on to common energy form of electricity for simplicity to understand do you know that you know anything you do in your life again wittingly or unwittingly not five appliances it is 50 appliances somewhere or other you are using energy now what is the energy environment linkage the linkage is there at every step lord krishna and bhagavad gita said you have not brought anything okay when you came to this life when you're going back you're not taking anything that means i am not capable of producing anything scientifically when it comes to energy the definition we've all gone through this in schools is energy can never be created not destroyed okay but and this is a big but energy conversion and utilization which you and i do creates devastation and destroys and one so whether i like it or not i am creating devastation and i am contributing to the destroying the environment energy extraction energy transportation generation conversion transmission transportation distribution and use energy in every one of them you could find that there is a linkage between energy now for you to have an idea you know we we create billions of, of countless number of tons of electricity 
year after year, every year, minute after minute, every minute. What we construct and build today will leave behind our emissions legacy. Can you just see the, in, with respect to the person standing next to the balloon, which is depicting one ton of CO2? What a size of your being. In the previous slide, I said you are, per year, 2.9 tons of CO2 are emitted. And supposing you live 100 years, is this slide sufficient even for 10 years? The balloons will overflow the slide. There's no way, you know, you are doing anything which is mitigating, containing this. Therefore, there is a great need for rethinking on everything we do, directly or indirectly, knowingly or not. Now, the construction industry emissions are there. This slide is to just say, I think, you know, building industry is the biggest lion's share of property. I will not go into this. Need for energy and environmental efficiency, I think um, Mahatma Gandhi, about 150 years ago, has done a wonderful thing. Earth has provided enough for everyone's need, but not for everyone's need. How true it is. How true it is. Now, for sustainability, while it can be subject of United Nations, G20, and so on and so forth, while we can think global, there is necessity to act global, act local. And it boils down to saying, starting from the global level, ultimately, it is the individual level. In fact, it needs to start with individual level and end with individual. There are many, many initiatives that have been taken up for the last 50 years. People have been talking from the rooftops, you know, in terms of what is required to be done, very, very systematically have been done. Year after year, many initiatives are this is all available. I'll leave this presentation or you can have a greater look at that. India announced in 2022 become, to become net zero by 2070. Prime Minister Modi has announced this. State governments have led by advancing net zero to 2050. Individual announced institutions would have come across, they have started announcing net zero much ahead by 2030. Some residential colonies have already become net zero ahead of 2022. Some individuals have already become net zero much ahead of 2022. But it's one in a billion, of course. Whereas billions have to be doing this job. It's not a one person job, one institution, one individual, one prime minister. Okay. My impatience is I think, you know, we are all talking about 2070, 2050, 2030, and so on and so forth. Why the heck cannot we do what you can do today? You know, in terms of what you can talk about. Why not the net zero? In some segments, some segments, some sectors, something that is in your hands, why not you be net zero right now? Okay. The question is, why so late? Okay. Why don't you even become climate positive right from today? At least in thinking. Put it in practice by the end of the day. In terms of, yes, you're going to be net positive right now. Now for net zero 2070, I asked this question. How would you feel if you're asked to marry in the year 2070 when you consider yourself eligible and are only 30 now? Do you see the impact? How miserable you would be? How would you feel to get into beauty pageant in the year 2070 when you're already 17. Does it make sense? How do India is mad of cricket? Get an Indian cricket team in 2070 when you're already 20. Please, for heaven's sake, have a perspective. 2070, please don't use it 2070, 2050, 2030 to suit you as it suits you. Instead, 
say what I can do now. Okay. In the net zero journey, there are certain parts, the formal parts. I won't get into the details. We can have a look at this later. Now you can become net zero, but I think what you need to think in terms of not just net zero, you need to think in terms of, am I a positive person? Am I representing a positive species of the 8.4 million species? Am I a positive guy? Can I be climate positive before I'm gone? The answer is very much possible. The question is, is there intent? Is there action? Have you started? If not, we start. Okay. Now, whose responsibility is for uh, sustainability? There's a very, very common question. Okay. Very in, in, uh, uh, required question. Okay. It's very common to find answers to test everybody. In your company, you say that department, that agency, that person, and so on. Government, say Prime Minister Modi, and so on. So, who builds a cat for sustainability? Please, Mahatma Gandhi has said, be the change you want to see. Don't look for alibis. Don't look for someone else. Look at yourself. I'm not a saint. I'm a builder or I'm a buyer of a flat, a apartment or villa. I am for making economic sense. Please don't, don't give me nyan. What life cycle? It is my life, okay? What do you know about my big purpose? How does it enhance my benefits when I incorporate CO reduction or mitigation options? What do I get out of it? These are the blunt, real questions following some reason or other. The reasons can be valid or not valid, but these are real. You cannot look at some other side and say, no, these are not real. If you look at the building industry, the builders and the buyers are in one uh, group. One group. Why are we dividing? Share the booty and share the responsibility. Why did we bring the concept? Today in the tourism industry, when the guests are made to take the benefits of, educated about the benefits of sustainability and not having the towel change every day, not having the bed sheet change in the room every day. If you are partnering with the guests and the guest is told it will cost you 50 rupees lesser for a room night, he's going to participate. Share the booty, share the responsibility. When one is transparent in providing you know, logic, most would accept the in, to invest a little more. Example, instead of uh, individual water purifiers, have a common purifier eliminating wastage, providing health standards, conforming water. Every home has a nonsensical contraption until the Supreme Court you know, intervened about last year. You were having RO plants being advertised by the corporates bought in every home, costing about 10,000 bucks and putting the contraption in the house. Instead, you don't need a auto plant. You need a common water purifying. Give a stamp, if you're the association president, give a stamp of quality and say, I assure you, this water conforms to WHO standards of health, and I'm providing clean water. You don't require, in the 200 apartments, you don't require 200 water purifiers. You just require one pot of water purifier common in the basement supplying maybe saving 95% of the cost and reducing 95% degradation of them. It's just one example. Please, for heaven's sake, again and again, feeling to you, look at everything that you do um, uh, with a pinch of salt. In fact, the fistful of salt. It is a quantity of demand supply when one obtains a benefit, buyer would invest a cable of water purifier or, or amount of I'm going to skip this slide. It's going to be available for you. Uh, I, this slide is just to say, I think the big, big time corporates, okay, the mighty front-ending sustainability, you know, while they're promoting. Okay, see this company. It's a public domain company. It says why they're sus you know, supporting sustainability. And uh, here they say. They are getting into global real estate sustainability benchmark and uh, financial results being announced in the newspaper 
a full page newspaper, one of the key messages they're saying is they are, you know, doing something on sustainability. In other words, the mighty front and sustainability rating while showcasing finances. This is the order of the day. From this, this is great. But what needs to be greater is whether or not there are financial benefits, greening is imperative for our lungs to work for the years in which we have been given by, by the Lord. Before uh, a green uh, certification, there are both national and international. I don't have to get into the details. And uh, quite a few, uh, more than two dozens in terms of certifications available. They are abundant knowledge is available, capability is available in terms of what you should do in a building, what you need to do for sustainability and so on. So pre, post, and during construction, what you need to do. Every type of building, every type of facility, there are knowledges completely available. What is required is, you know, uh, the intent. I need to go a little uh, faster, I guess. Um, the energy efficiency is a key step. I'll move fast on this. All I want to say here is 100 units of uh, primary energy gets dwindled to two or 10 maximum in anything that we use. Here's an example being given a DLS lamp, because a CFL lamp, you know, 100 becomes 10. If it is an LED lamp, 100 becomes 15, and so on and so forth. But the fact is, you are more than the lion's share, you're getting it you know, wasted in terms of conversion. I mentioned in the beginning. Therefore, what you do save at, at least in your home, in your hands, it has a 50 times impact on the source energy, and therefore it has a 50 times impact on the carbon, and therefore the environment. Therefore, it has a 50 times impact on your lungs, your and my lungs. Okay, okay energy efficiency, this says, I think, has a great role for the mitigation of carbon. Now, energy efficiency is not for compromising on anything. You do whatever you want. You, you take whatever you want. Whatever is needed is given. Do it a little more smartly, intelligently, informally, and then do it. Avoid the deviations. So avoid overdoing, oversizing, overcooling, overheating, overpressurizing, and so on. So if you take a few seconds you know, off uh, uh, line, this uh, slide will tell you saying that what exactly is it. No rocket science, basically common sense. Now, why only three R's? Conventionally, people say, you know, reduce, recycle, reuse. In the shopping mall, you go, you get on the bag saying, uh, they put a logo and say, recycle. Why we limit our thinking? Human species are most intelligent. And there are no end to this R's. You can keep on doing whatever is required. If you don't know, there's someone else who knows. Think there are no limit to you know what you want to do in terms of ideas or reducing energy and therefore the impact. Okay, what you need to do here is I think it, uh, this uh, slide I will go fast. Just basically say I think you need to concentrate on demand reduction first before getting to you know um, you know supply side management. Okay, it is not sufficient to just put a solar power plant. You need to first reduce your demand, then put a solar power plant. I'll give you a case study later. Same, you know, how it is important to have a good sequencing. Both are important. Demand side reduction is important. Efficient equipment is important. Efficient supplies and so on and so on. So forth. But I think you need to have intelligent way of sequencing it, having a mixture of, uh, uh, you know, items to be done. Again, I will skip this slide. This is available. You can go through this as to what you need to do design stage construction operations. This is a minuscule, what I presented this. Okay. What we have available is for any kind of activity that you have, you name it, there is a manual available from IGDC, and 20 other organizations all over the world, uh, like a peeled banana information available. Not so much a difficulty in terms of ideas, but I think what I keep saying this, intent is what important, action is what Please, kindly note, the world is moving towards carbon management, transform, transformation. You please get into thinking about, you know, carbon management in everything that you do. Transform from being a construction manager to a carbon manager. Transform yourself from being a civil engineer, MEP engineer to a carbon manager. 
Now transform yourself from construction market to carbon market. Transform yourself from construction finance to carbon finance. Everything that you do, think in terms of how you can relate to sustainability. So life cycle benefits, I'll go through the case studies. I need to go a little fast in this. I will go through some case studies. You need to, uh, on the supply side, liberally incorporate and consider renewable energy. Can be green power, renewables power purchase whenever and you know, wherever on-site renewable energy generation is not possible due to certain compulsions of your site. Whenever and wherever you have on-site opportunity, please implement renewable energy. Possible at national level, village level, residential economy level, individual home level, and sky is the level. There's absolutely no limit at all. I'm going to take you through national level, state level, individual home level, economy level, and so on. This is a beautiful case of uh, you know uh, India's 24 by 7 battery energy storage system based solar power village. Village you Mudra. Gujarat. If, if, uh, Krishna, if, if I may step in, you have yeah. another, say, five, six minutes, then we will invite a few things and close by four. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll keep them. Yeah, I'll come Thank, you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Um, is the first village in India to become a net uh, uh, renewable energy generator. In fact, it's a possible, a positive renewable energy generator. The perfect journey, for gen, a journey from supply side, why not, uh, why net zero in fact, energy and climate positive. This village uh, was in, uh, inaugurated by Prime Minister in October, 6.6 6 megawatts ground motor solar power plant, common plant. In addition, they have chosen about 1,300 homes, one, meg, one kilowatt each, again, another 1.3 megawatts, 9,000 tons of CO2, yeah, you know, emissions uh, series. And this village requires only just one megawatt. They are giving you and me 7.3 megawatt. These guys are net positive, not net zero, net positive now, not in 2070, not in 2050, not in 2030. This is what I say. So if one village is showcased, all villages can be so, uh, I do the same thing for, you know, uh, one airport, Cochin International Airport, seven, eight years ago, became, uh, you know, surplus. All airports can be solarized. All railway stations can be solarized. This is the integrated coach factory, which makes this, um, you know, this super fast trains these days, Sunday Bharat Express and so on. Again, uh, you know, a surplus generator. Now, this is a, a a colony where my brother lives in Hyderabad, 700 homes, residential com complex. All the roofs are laden with wonderful solar power plants. Again, you know, this is at an individual home level. This is yours truly, my home at Kenya. 2008, I've become energy positive. Therefore, one resident showcase, any can be so. Now, I'll give you this case study where I said you have to talk, uh, first talk about the demand, reduce the demand to the uh, to maximum possible, then talk in terms of solar, even if you have money. This is a case of a concrete building. And uh, in India, Bureau of Energy Efficiency gives a star rating, one star if it's 175 uh, units per year per meter square. Two star is 150, three, and so on and so forth. So by the time when we, these people asked us uh, to um, uh, help them for a solar power plant on their terrace, we found that they're mo more efficient than a five star building. This was in 2016. And uh, by that, if we had gone straight away put the money, we'd have done the wrong thing. <clears throat> the space required would have been about 1,500 meters square for the, the requirements. What we did is we reduced uh, the demand by efficient efficiency gains by operating practices, minor retrofits, and major replacements, all on a positive basis. Brought it down to less than 50 units per meter square per year. So it is something like about 10 star. Okay? And see the rooftops full of space comes down, drops from 1,500 meters square to just a little over 500 meters. 
this is the impact that we can, you and I can create if we reduce the demand only to the needed level. This consulate is not foregoing anything. They are still doing air conditioning. They are still using all the requirements, required energy uses that are there. They're not compromised. Okay. All right. I will skip all these cases. This is about the chillers and the, you know heat farms and um, you know daylight. Thing are given this. I think that this is a wonderful, like, you know, main, make, uh, make in India company called Sky uh, Sky Shade Technologies from Hyderabad. Beautiful company. They have wonderful solutions. Even basements, they can get you sunlight, and they can get you light and not the heat. By the way, so we need to just think in terms of there are quite a few that you can think in terms of what it can do impact at individual level. So on. I'll uh, hurry. I'll just stop by giving this life cycle cost analysis. Um, you need to consider life cycle cost benefits. Many a time, individually, we face this problem. Should I buy a fan for 2,500 rupees or should I buy a fan for 3,500 rupees? Okay. All things being equal, when do I buy one? Now, this is a case of a capital cost being 15 million and operation and maintenance cost of 135 million in the span of, let's say, 10 years' time. Total is 150 million. It is the money that has gone from you, direct or indirect? Day one and day last. Okay. Now, supposing the capital cost increases by just 10%. Okay. So it is instead of 15 million, this becomes 16.5 million. And you see what happens to your OM costs and drops from 135 to just 94.5. So instead of 150 life cycle costs, okay, you are having just triple one. So the savings is 26% against the 1% increase on the overall cost. So please apply the right sense to say where you want to bargain what. Okay? This is the point that we need to do. Okay? So I'm coming to the end of my presentation. What's the take home? There is an integrated approach and a project inception leads to best energy efficiency right at the birth, do it right. If not, it becomes a potential retrofit opportunity in a built environment. We need to make corrections, which are possible in some cases. That Swiss bank building in Chennai, hot and humid climate, there will be no way for the next 100 years they're going to change the bazaar. Okay, so please, right in the beginning, think in terms of nipping the bank. This is optimization of capital, material handling, and energy cost through avoidance of duplicate efforts. Uh, so when do we start sustainability? Right here and now. The auspicious time would come now. No matter whether you had multiple starts, you've been a, you've been a non starter, you started and left, forget. Give this a kickstart right now. In this group, if there is at least one person, one starter, I think I'm thankful to the organizers. That's right. Absolutely. If you can change one mind, the rest of it will happen. I'm right. You're right, Krishna. On this, I'm. Uh, well, thank you so much, uh, Professor Vanshika Agarwal. In the next one minute or so, can you share your message to the students of what the takeaways are from this meeting? Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Sir, actually, I feel really privileged to be a part of such a big, you know, webinar. And uh, our eminent speaker, Krishna Rao, sir, have mentioned such a beautiful statements that I've actually written down in my diary. And I really want to mention them. Like, for example, we, uh, we should plan 136 trees per year, you know, to return the consumptions which have consumed by the environment. And I feel privileged, like our institute, every year uh, plant 100 tea, uh, trees. Right. And, and then there was a one statement that emit 50 billions, you know, tons carbon dioxide every year. That's a very huge number. Even though there was a like, uh, why we have to wait for 2070 for the net zero statement, right? And we, can, we can't gotcha. get married by that year or we can't get the beauty pageant exactly. title also. So these were the so impactful statements. And I just believe that it always enriched our young minds. So thank you so much, sir. <laughs> thank you. Imran Khan, I know you have worked for a for a decent length of time with uh, Mr. Krishnamohan Rao. Any take from you that you want to share with these students here 
being an energy professional yourself who is now working from out of Abu Dhabi or Dubai or wherever? Imran Khan. Do you want to speak, Imran? Okay. Ravel Ji, Dr. Ravel, uh, can you say hello to us? Yes, good afternoon, sir. Yes, you're always there. Thank you yes. so much. Can, can you share quickly in about 30, 50 seconds your take on what Mr. Krishnamon Rao has presented today? I, I was deeply touched when Professor Rao said, we take more than we give. And that's where one thing and second is whatever construction we make today will leave behind our emission legacy. So this is a real thinking in terms of carbon. But my I have certain questions also. Regarding the solar, I have posted in question answer box. The solar yes. panel advocacy, does it Consider the panel manufacturing and panel dismantling and disintegration cost. What benefit we compare is Fair compared question. to, the, to, compare to yeah. the thermal power. So benchmark, benchmark needs, yes. No, those are, yes. Dr. Ravel, uh, those are questions uh, which are, you know, to do with life cycle assessment and such. We will leave the question with our faculty members here who uh, mentor these students. But you have a very valid question there. No, sir. Uh, just any single take for this? Yes, yes. Professor, Professor um, has wonderfully yeah, said we, 100 to 60 to 40 to 30 high tension, low tension, and ultimately reaching power to my life. So the benchmark is, is taken on a wrong uh, base. 100 to 2 is, is a 98% uh, uh, loss. It, it is more, more deadly as than RO system. If we compare carbon versus more right. water. So just I'm just uh, trying to learn from you, sir. I got uh, it. Thank indeed, you. yes. Uh, indeed, yes. Thank in you, Rahul Ji. Yeah. In the current world... Uh, uh, no. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. No, we will leave that as a message, uh, uh, Dr. Right. Ravel, because we don't uh -huh. have the time for a further discussion on this. We have another minute or two. Pail Jain, do you want to say anything at all. Pail, are you there? Do you want to say hello and uh, say something? No. Yes, doctor, I'm here. Uh, I think she's again muted. I'm here. there. I'm here, doctor. Yes, yes. Would you want to say something? No, I just think, uh, you know, it was a very, uh, really yes. very insightful Would you want to add uh, presentation. Sorry. I was listening. Sorry, I jumped out in the middle for one second, but I was listening very carefully. And I think there are lots of very pertinent questions here. Uh, I have the same questions, you know, but when are things going to change? How are we going to make a change? But your presentation was absolutely amazing. Mr. Rao, would like some of those facts to share with our students, please? Because uh, the facts that you said that we're using the earth five times over, 1.7 yes. times over, I mean, that is information we want to show to our students through social media. So if I may request for some of that data so we can... By some of all of it. Data, all of it, please. Okay. All, of all right. <laughs> Thank you. I'll leave it to you, doctor. Yeah. I think Dr. Hariharan is frozen. I don't know if he can hear me. Doctor, can you hear us? Uh, should I uh, read out the questions? Yeah, please. Okay. Um, I will start with Fani Tuvedi. I know her. India announces to be net zero in 2070. I'm 44 years old. I have to live till 92 and PM Modi has to be 109 years old to see this happen. Now this goal is neither helping me live till 92 nor will Modi ji be there to see if it happened. I will vote only if I can get, I don't think vote is uh, a question. How can this happen by 2028 is her question. Yeah. Uh, if you have noticed uh, the uh, examples I've given on the solarization, Absolutely. Some, of, some of them have become uh, positive, uh, white uh, net zero. They've already become climate positive. Okay, So there are ways and means in certain situations. 
certain segments, it's always possible. What we are talking is a bigger picture. We are talking about our intent and are initiating the action no matter what you have done or not done so. Pani, does that answer your question? <laughs> She has not written anything yet. Um, there's one more question. Uh, Muni Rabat, sir, is the production of degradation cost of PVC and silicon use considered for solar energy? That's already discussed. So that's taken. We can take go to next one. Okay. Fani Trivedi says, no, this is not the answer to her question. Um, there is an anonymous attendee. I okay. would request you to please give your name so that we can pose these questions. Can I, Any can, other questions? Can I interject yes. for a second? Dr. Haryan, can we yeah, please come? <laughs> yes, can we I? can. Ravi, you want to say something? Go on, Ravi. Yes, sir. There is a wonderful, Dr. wonderful, Ravi, please go on. wonderful presentation of uh, US and Denmark and South Korea and all that. But most of the information we are collecting comes from the countries who are affluent. They exploit the nature much, much, right. much more than any one of us. Can we have our in-house resources? I got that. I think Krishnamohan should take that and wind up the session since uh, Yatin says that we are past the clock. Uh, Krishna, you are concluding notes on this and we close the conversation yeah. after. Uh, uh, I, I agree, Professor uh, uh, Rahul. You know, yes, the information is uh, you know, not necessarily native. In fact, India doesn't unfortunately figure in the, some of these data points okay, because they have lack of data. But the bigger point is this. We need to question ourselves and saying, I think, uh, like the consulate building, if there is an a possibility of reducing uh, the demand without compromise of your uh, needs, why not? So it has got nothing to do with what's happening in the US, Denmark, or South Korea. I think it's got to do with my contribution for sustainability. That's all I would say. Thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you uh, to all of you who are present here today and uh, uh, particularly to the students of uh, the College in Kanpur, Access Colleges. Uh, architect Vanshika Agarwal, thank you for being here. And uh, this uh, recording will be shared. And as uh, Payal said, a lot of the numbers that Krishna is speaking about, uh, Mr. Krishna Rao is speaking about today, have to be shared. And you need to see how you want to take this, like Ravanji said, and enable your students to understand what life cycle assessments are and the far larger questions on sustainability that we all have before us. I'll stop there, uh, Vanshika. Is that all right? Yes? Yes, Vanshika? sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. That's it. Uh, uh, thank you so much to everybody. That's it, I think. Thank you, Krishna, for, for finding time despite your other challenges. Uh, we will again meet tomorrow. Uh, uh, there is another session, this time uh, from a very lovely professional called Sandeep Narang. He's going to speak on construction water. You will get the invite and such things from uh, Ethin Malik and the Secretariat of the Prem Jain Memorial Trust. Have a great day. Thank you so much once again for being here. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Mr. Rao. Thank you. Pleasure. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.